Hey folks, it's Josh, Stony Ridge Farmer. Welcome to the farm vlog today. It's rainy, it's nasty, it's cold. We got burn piles burning here on the other side of the farm, but the bulldozer can't work today because it's just too nasty. So we're gonna go work in the shop today. We're going over to my buddy's shop. He's got a race car in the shop and they're working on the race car. It's an open wheel modified race car. We're gonna go over there and have a little bit of fun today. So come along, let's go do a little bit of rainy day work. All right, woo! Tap the gas twice. Stony Bridge Farm Stony Bridge Just can't complain about that for a hundred bucks. <laughs> she's running good guys. She's purring like a kitten. Had to do a little bit of adjusting on the timing and she's purring good. I think eventually, and you guys can post some comments down there, but I think eventually we'll take the hundred dollar truck here and we'll put some Flowmaster exhaust on it make it get a good sweet exhaust note and also we've got to put some new pipes on the Dodge Ram pickup because it doesn't have any pipes whatsoever now a little update on the unicorn truck on the Cummins Dodge Ram we are waiting for a shop to contact us back so we can take the drive shaft in and show you what it looks like balancing a drive shaft so I thought it'd be pretty cool to take you in there I contacted a shop about gosh I'm gonna say two weeks ago right when I first did the video and they still haven't gotten back to me so I may just pull it out and replace that carrier bearing myself and show you how it's all pressed on there maybe we won't balance the drive shaft but I thought it'd be pretty cool to take you to a drive shaft shop and show you that we'll let you know in the next few vlogs if we go on and decide to work on our truck ourselves we'll pull it up in the shop here and we'll get it done ourselves <laughs> Let's buggy. Folks, if this is your first time, woohoo, camera fall. <laughs> Almost a camera failed there. So folks, if this is your first time to the uh, Stony Ridge Farmer, we are a farm channel, okay? We're not a homesteader channel, we're not a prepper channel. We're an altogether farm channel. We're different than the rest, and we'll take you and we'll show you what it takes to build a beautiful, wonderful farm. And we bought this truck right here for a hundred bucks. So we're going off farm today. Go have a little bit of fun. So right over here guys the bulldozers have been working clearing land burning big old piles of stumps things are starting to look pretty good this is our dirt road we live on guys so when we get up here to the shop this guy has a logging operation and his logging operation basically sponsors this race car so it's pretty cool you'll see a bunch of stuff around and, and we'll probably go into detail about a few of those things later on in a future vlog but today we're just going to check out the race car and these guys have been nice enough to let me come over and check them out and work with them and so we'll be in the pits at some point here with this race car it's gonna be really cool a lot of fun stuff to come here on the channel all right guys we're pulling up here got some really big equipment it's pretty cool this is a this is a really neat place All right guys, so we're here at Garrett Racing and we're gonna take you inside the shop here. We're gonna show you what's going on with the car. We're gonna talk about the car a little bit and we're gonna take you up underneath this race car and show you a few things. It's gonna be pretty interesting. I think you'll have some fun. Hey man, what's going on? Hey Josh, how you doing man? Pretty good, pretty good. So, tell me, who are you? My name's Nathan and uh, live here in a little town called Stoneville. We got a little play toy here that we're working on today. This is what they call an open wheel modified, uh, real popular up north and here down south too. Uh, we run oval track asphalt type races. Uh, this specific type of chassis is called a, a Troyer and it's manufactured in uh, New York. It's a pretty well known uh, race car chassis uh, from up that way, but uh, they're used a lot down in this area also. Cool. Now you'll be running at a speedway called Ace Speedway, is that right? Yeah, Ace Speedway. Uh, it's Burlington, North Carolina, near uh, Elon University. Some people may know where that is. Uh, so out in the middle of uh, cornfields and all that type of stuff, but it's a nice facility uh, and a good place to have a good Friday night. Inside here, this is the cockpit where he'll be sitting. Uh, race seat. Uh, he said he wears the Hans device to help protect his neck. If you guys have never seen inside a race car, this is what the inside looks like. So what kind of engine do you have in the open wheel modified? All right, so they, they basically allow, you can run Chevrolets, Fords, Dodges, whatever you really want to run, uh, but they have certain rule packages depending on what type of engine you run. And uh, personally, I like the Chevrolets. This is a uh, Chevrolet small block 350, uh, which you normally find in trucks or, 
or old model cars and that type of thing. And uh, it's been bored about a 360. We're allowed up to, I think, 362 cubic inches. And uh, we've got a racing cam in it to help us get around the track, get up off the corners, and uh, some special stuff with a carburetor and that type of thing. But, but really, it's just a small block Chevy 350. Now, you were saying the suspension on this thing is basically all designed for this chassis, for this type of chassis, and you basically buy this entire chassis and build the car yourself or you can buy one already like this and get all the parts, body parts, all this stuff you can purchase right from a supplier. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. You can uh, really, like I said, there's Troyer Modifieds, there's Spafco, there's different type of uh, chassis manufacturers that actually build these things. Uh, you can actually see on some of the control arms they still have the Troyer uh, logo sticker on them when you buy it from them. Uh, some people that really get involved with the racing may build their own cars so gotcha. you don't have to necessarily buy one from a manufacturer but if you're just getting started in, into it or or don't have the resources to make your own cars uh, it's a real good option to go that route to to allow you to race and get out there and also buy ready available suspension components like your upper control arms your lower control arms your your tie rods connected from your your rack and pinion over to your your spindle uh, your sway bar arms here that that prevents the car from rolling over as it goes through the turns. So really, anything that you need on this car, you're you're able to buy. Or if you have the means or the knowledge to do so, you can do it yourself. So folks, Nathan was telling me he was working on his car down at the racetrack and basically having a practice day. And whenever he went around the turn, he was losing oil pressure and losing oil pressure. So he was going around the turn and basically as he let off the gas, the oil pressure light would come on inside the car so there was some sort of issue he took it apart and found out that the little nozzle that comes off of the oil pump and goes down into the uh, bottom of the oil pan had slipped off it had vibrated off so he got that fixed but it kind of messed up some of his bearings just a little bit. We'll go over there and take a look at those bearings. Folks, I hope you're enjoying this kind of thing, this kind of education, this kind of fun, taking you to places like this and seeing this kind of stuff. Click the like button. Click the like button. Subscribe to the channel and click the little bell. It'll notify you when I post a new video. So what good would it be to be subscribed if you didn't know when I post a new video and you couldn't see cool, fun stuff like this? So let's take a look at these bearings. Click the like button. Pound it. Boom. All right, so uh, basically what we uh, Josh was just describing, you were at the track the other week. Uh, we were testing and I noticed when I was going through the center of the corner, I was losing oil pressure. When I dropped the oil pan, uh, I noticed that my oil pump here, you can see the well now, there was just basically a hole here with no pickup tube. Yeah, gotcha. um, the screen and everything was actually laying in the bottom of my oil pan, and uh, which is not good. Nope. Lose oil pressure, and which could make us a big boom when we go around the racetrack. Anyways, I took it to my engine builder. He, uh, he got me a new pickup, new screen, and actually used his TIG welder and made sure that it's not going to fall off now. So we're completely welded all the way around. So just to be safe, we went ahead and pulled the, one of the main bearings, uh, which, which the crank rides in, and those bearings look decent. We didn't have really any wear on those and should extend the life of the rest of the season before we pulled the engine down and freshened it up. Now, the rod bearings were a little different story. Uh, I pulled the center rod bearings off, and what I found was some of the wear that you see in here almost looks like little scratches or gouge marks. Yep. Uh, we don't necessarily want that because it could actually lock the bearing up and what we call spin the bearing while it's in the, on the rod in the journal on the crankshaft, which would actually could possibly mess our crankshaft up and our rod. So uh, luckily we caught it before it had any major issues. What I did is I went and bought some new bearings and just to show you what this looks like versus what a new one looks like. This would be a brand new bearing. You can see very nice, smooth, shiny surface versus the gouge scratched. It's still not terrible, but it's getting to the shape that while we already had the pan off, we needed to replace it without worrying about having the motor blowing. So that's what we're going to do here in just a few minutes, maybe show you how to actually get in here to put new rod bearings in. <laughs> all right, guys, so we don't have time in a 15-minute video to stuff all this information in, but we are going to get up underneath the car, and we're going to see what it looks like with the oil pan off of it. It'll be interesting. He's going to get under the car, and I'm going to get under the car. And I'm a little bit bigger than he is. Again, guys, something that... Let's see here. Let's do this. Something that most people don't understand is that I'm part Wookiee. So and I'm here's, part what, midget. here's what normal people look like. <laughs> And there I am. <laughs> All right, guys, so getting up underneath here. It's difficult to film underneath the car with a big old camera like we have here, but we'll get you the best shot we possibly can. 
So what are we looking at here? So basically, the oil pump would actually mount here. So when I took it off, I saw that there was no pickup tube in there, so we decided to go ahead and check the bearings. So what we did was first, common sense would say, we would go to the front main bearing because if we lost oil, oil normally since all of it would pull up at the rear of the engine, you wouldn't have it here. So if we had lost oil pressure here, you would have more likely have the bearing mess up. So we pulled it off, looked, no issue here, so we should be good on the rest of the, the bearings uh, that connect to the crank. Now, our rod bearings were a little bit different story. As you can see, looking up in the engine, uh, all these little studs sticking out with the nuts on them, there should be eight, because we got a V8 here, and we would take one off, rotate around and look at it. And it's not that big of a deal to do. So what I would do was, let's say, if this, this rod was all the way up, and I wanted to look at it, I would actually turn, I've got my ratchet on the crank on the end of the engine. Yep. I would turn the engine over, and rotate this assembly down to where it would be easy for me to access to get to. These bolt, these bolts right here. Yeah, so this one right here is in a pretty good shape. I may rotate it a little more to where I can get a ratchet on there. And so what I would do is break these loose. Take the, This is what they call the cup. It's basically two halves. Take the cup off. You can see the bearing and inspect it or put a new one on. Uh, it's a pretty easy thing to do. Uh, once you're done, you have to make sure you torque the bolts. Uh, to ensure that, for one, that they don't back off, and two, when you torque a bolt, it actually stretches the bolt. I don't know if anybody knows that, but you actually stretch the metal, and it actually extends the bolt slightly. You don't ever go past the point that it can't go or spring back to where it originally was. Uh, if you do, the bolt's no good, so you have to replace the bolt. But if you torque it to the right specs, the bolt will stretch a little bit, lock it at the right force, and it, while it's rotating and at those high RPMs, should have to worry about it breaking off. What kind of RPMs are you talking about in this race car? So typically what we normally turn by the time we let off the throttle at the end of the straightaway, we're right around 7,000 to 7,200 RPM. So more than what your normal street car would normally see, uh, especially on like a, a V8 car. It's what we've got to do to go fast. So. <laughs> <laughs> so guys, I'm going to get underneath here and we're going to help him out putting these bearings in. Basically, he's just going to unbolt. And what he's talking about rod bearings, it's a connecting rod. It's the rod that connects to the piston and pushes it up and down inside the engine. If you don't know how an engine works, I'll post a link down below to a video that tells you about how an engine works, okay? Pretty cool information. If this is something totally new to you, you know, if you like to learn, this is really cool information. So, guys, I just wanted to take it with me today and show you something I thought was really cool and something pretty fun. And, you know, we're going to go to the racetrack with this guy. We're going to be in the pits. We're going to watch him race. Maybe one day, one day, we might drive a race car too. I don't know. I don't think I can fit in that thing. We're just talking about window size versus belly size. I'm not so sure I can fit in that thing. So guys, thanks a lot for joining us here on the Stony Ridge Farm. We went off farm today to have a little bit of fun and show you a race car, show you something cool, something you may have never ever had the chance to see if I hadn't taken you there. Be sure you click the like button, subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed and click the little bell down there. It'll notify you when I post a new video and sometime here in the future we're going to go to the racetrack. Also, I want to let you know our Stony Ridge Farmer shirts are available again. So they're still available. There'll be links down there in the video description if you want to pick one up. I thank you a whole lot. We'll see you next time on Stony Ridge Farmer, all right? Woo! Woo! <laughs> Guys, I totally forgot, man. He, he's got to do the woo. <laughs> he wooed back there. All right. Thanks for watching Stony Ridge Farmer, guys. All right? Woo! Woo! <laughs> <laughs> uh, good stuff. <laughs> well, come on down to the Stony Ridge. Bring your wife and bring your kids. We're living life pure and sweet. That's the way it's supposed to be, Stony Ridge. I tell you what, that's really fun. That's something really, really cool. Those guys are really excited about having me over there and doing videos and helping promote their race team. Uh, so much that he said, I'm backing up right now. Anyway, so much so that he said, uh, if you want to put a big old Stony Ridge Farmer sticker on the side of that thing, man, we'd be glad to. <laughs> so, I don't know. It's pretty fun, guys. Thanks a lot. We'll see you next time. I ain't scared of dirt.